Hey everyone, it's me, Michael G. Michael Anthony Judas Sissy for the All Things Billy video podcast. <laughs> yeah, um, I think anyway, that's the plan here. I don't know that this is the exact right software to use, but um, we'll try it. It's Zoom and I have some things to share with you. So I'll, if there's a better way, eventually I'll figure it out or not. Um, but today we're here for a, a brief episode to talk about something important, Billy the Kid's ears. So let's have a look at uh, young William, Master William. All right. So this is the picture that uh, you would all know and love. I guess, <laughs> of William H. Bonney, taken sometime 1879, early 1880, somewhere in Fort Sumner, maybe in front of Beaver Smith's saloon by some photographer. A lot unknown. We don't know exactly where it was taken, exactly when. We don't know who took it. We know it was identified by as being Billy the Kid by people who came later, Dan Diedrich, Paulie de Maxwell, Etc. Pat Garrett. Uh, so we can reasonably be sure that this is Billy the Kid. Um, interestingly enough, one of the uh, commenters on the uh, on one of our previous episodes said, "Oh, Michael, there is a death photo of Billy the Kid, and this is it. This guy's dead, and you don't know anything about Victorian era post mortem photography. And if you did, you would know that this guy's dead." Um, yeah, I've never heard that from anybody before. Uh, he looks uh, maybe a little cross-eyed, but he doesn't look dead. And he looks like he's standing up. I know there's a, a photographer's, uh, what do you call it? A little stand to keep the subject still, because for a tintype, it's not like the, the one, six, one uh, sixty-four thousandth of a second frame rate or exposure rate or whatever it's called that we have right now. It took a few seconds, and if you moved, you made the picture blur. So, uh, yeah, if you know more about Victorian era postmortem photography, and you're going to tell me that this photo is Billy the Kid dead, well, uh, okay, I don't think so. But no one ever mentioned that, uh, and no one ever mentioned that it was taken on July fifteenth, eighteen eighty one. Yeah, so. You got an uphill battle there, but let's look at Billy's ears. They're nothing spectacular. I mean, I think mine are nice, tiny, but yeah. And uh, I want you to pay particular attention to the ear, not even the shape of the ear, but the ear lobe. This is really simple. And you can see that uh, where the mouse is here, that Billy has what's called a detached ear lobe. And that is that the ear comes down and then goes up a little bit to attach to the face. And you can see it on this ear as well. Now, this, I believe, is still the reversed image. So uh, this would be uh, backwards, but <laughs> the ears would, would look the same no matter which way you had the image. So the earlobe is out here. It's out here. It hangs down past the point of attachment, just simply called a detached earlobe. I have the same things, um, which uh, I can show you. So here's my earlobe. And you can see it's attached at some point higher and, and therefore the earlobe hangs down past the point of attachment. Pretty simple, right? So let's go back and look at Billy. This is fun to do this on uh, video because it's usually me just talking into a microphone. Uh, so again, unspectacular, but that's just the way earlobes work. Uh, there are attached earlobes. These are unattached or detached earlobes, but uh, let's move on to a little something else before we proceed. And this is an article from the Hearing Health Foundation, and it's called, it says, Ears, the New Fingerprints. I'm just gonna read a couple of real small passages. All ears are the same, right? Wrong. Ears are actually unique to each and every person so much so that they are comparable in uniqueness to even uh, to the fingerprint. Research has even suggested ears 
may be a more effective identification tool than a fingerprint. And then it talks about some technology you could use to figure that out. What makes the ear so unique? One's ears are fully formed at birth and age gracefully over time, making them an ideal body part to confirm identity. Fingerprints can change due to the development of calluses from repeated labor, which can make them less reliable. Let's just go back one quick second. Okay, one's ears are fully formed at birth and age gracefully over time, making them an ideal body part to confirm identity. All right, so when you're born, your ears have a shape, that's the shape they stay. Ears do not get bigger, that's a misnomer. Your ears and your nose don't get bigger, you might be not believe that with mine, but they do tend to sag over time, right? The skin on your face sags and so they may get lower and droop down. Uh, but they don't get any bigger. The ears are basically made of cartilage and cartilage doesn't grow more after your body is done growing. Ask anybody with bad knees, like me, bad shoulders, like me, uh, bad whatever, like me. Yeah, cartilage, once it's gone, it's gone. doesn't grow back. So we are, uh, and again, this, uh, this article from the Hearing Health Foundation, uh, and if you want to know about the Hearing Health Foundation, largest nonprofit funder of hearing and balance research based in the United States, over 60 years in business. We also promote hearing health and the importance of protection to prevent hearing problems before they occur. All right. So they, they know a little bit about ears and hearing. <laughs> The reason we talk about Billy's ears is because we don't have his fingerprints. In fact, until about 1892, fingerprints weren't even a thing, and they didn't become widely used in criminal investigations or for identification until the early 1900s. So Billy being arrested uh, by Pat Garrett at Stinking Springs, although he knew who he was, they, they would not have taken his fingerprints, and we don't have a record of those. You might say, oh, gosh, that's too bad. That would be an easy way to identify Billy or Brushy or Miller or whoever um, if we had all of their fingerprints, but we don't. At least we don't have Billy's, so there's nothing to compare it to. But we have the ears, and as you just heard, the ears are a more reliable indicator of identity than even fingerprints. So let's take a look just for, whoop, for one brief moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, new technology. One last brief moment at Billy's ears and look at the, sh the whoops, sorry about that. Uh, look at the detached eardrum, goes back up and joins the face. Over time, these ears, if Billy became an old man, would sag. I don't think they'd come down to his chin, but yeah, they'd come down a little bit but the, the way they attach to the face would not change. All right, okay. Now let's take a look at the ears of your friend and mine, Oliver P. Roberts, better known as Brushy Bill. And you can immediately see in both of these photos of Brushy, that the ears are significantly different. Forget the shape and size, it's irrelevant. It's not even worth considering. Look at here and look at here and look at the way the ears attach to the face. Remember, Billy had those ears where the, the earlobe was detached and then the, the, the ear came back up to meet the face, but Brushy has an attached earlobe almost completely straight into the jawline. These are like fingerprints, folks. These are absolutely crystal clear pictures. Well, as crystal clear as you're gonna get when I'm blowing them up on my screen of brushy bills, dramatically attached eardrums. This doesn't happen in nature after you are born. Your, your unattached earlobes like Billy had do not suddenly attach themselves in such dramatic and straight fashion. It just doesn't happen. And so if you want to know 
if you want to give credence to brushy Bill Roberts being Billy the Kid, all you have to do is check the fingerprints. And because there aren't any fingerprints, there's something better, and that is the ears. And these ears do not belong to the same man. This would be more dramatic. Do not belong to the same man that these ears do. Case closed. There is nothing else to discuss. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to bring you some more about Brushy Bill and obviously Billy the Kid. Got something uh, exciting that I'm waiting to be delivered so I can dig into it and uh, talk about it. But you don't need to go any further than checking a absolute identification source between the two people and understand that they are not the same person. It doesn't matter what affidavits you have. It doesn't matter what evidence you think that Brushy Bill brought forward that only he could know. None of that matters. It is absolute and completely not the same person. And that's it. And it would be simple. You can look at a number of other things like facial features. The fact that these two guys don't look anything alike, especially in Brushy's younger photo, is that, but that's irrelevant. They are not the same people because this detached eardrum or earlobe rather on both sides does not in any way, shape or form match this one because they're not the same person. Now, you don't need to have a, a, a medical degree to figure that out, but it helps if you do. Well, luckily for me, I have a, a friend who works for an ear, nose, and throat surgical clinic or surgical group, and I mask these photos off. I just took the, the ear from Brushy and the ear from Billy, and sent them to her and said, hey, one of these uh, belongs to this guy at 20 years old. And then the other one belongs to the same person somewhere between 50 and 70 years later. What do you see? And her response was, I don't see how that could be possible. And I said, what do you mean? She said, because they're completely different. I asked if she wouldn't mind if she'd bring it to one of the surgeons. And uh, she, I didn't get to talk to the surgeon, but she came back and sent me a message and said, very simply, he looked at them and said, it is a, this is the quote, a physical impossibility that one of, uh, that this one picture is a, is a picture of the exact same person at any age in their life. It's a physical impossibility that these are the same person, barring surgical intervention. And that's it. Of all the other things that look nothing like Billy the Kid, of all the other evidence that you can easily debunk and dispute, this one is 100% irrefutable. And don't tell me, oh, Billy's hat pushed his ears down or uh, the photographer took a weird picture. It has nothing to do with where this ear attaches to the face in its straight down attached fashion and where Billy's ears do not. That's all there is to it. You might want there to be more to it, but there isn't. Let's see if I can... Uh, no, I probably can't do that. I wonder if I could have switched between these. I guess I probably could have. I can't see the video. I can't see the preview of what I'm sharing on the screen. I think I probably could have just flipped back and forth between these. So here is Brushy Bill Oliver, whoops, Oliver P. Roberts. Here's William H. Bonney. Here's Oliver P. Roberts attached long eardrums as reliable or more so than a fingerprint. Here's William H. Bonney's detached earlobes. They're not the same person. 
They never were. They never will be. You'll never dig anything up. You'll never get DNA that will prove it because it's already proven. They're not. So what do we do with this information? Well, we endeavor to go find out as much as we can about the life of Billy the Kid. And honestly, I would love to find out as much as possible about the life of Brushy Bill Roberts. Because the fact that late in life, this guy got swept up into this whirlwind, two years of his life being toured around the Southwest and talking to people and asking for affidavits and identifying places like how that all happened to me is fascinating. I would love to know more. I would love to have been a fly on the wall of the meetings between Morrison and Brushy and just see the point where they both said, yep, let's do it. Where they both either became convinced <laughs> that Brushy was Billy the Kid or they just made a pact to portray it as that. But as it turns out, he wasn't because the fingerprints don't lie. And in this case, nor do the ears. See you next time. Please subscribe, like, subscribe, comment. If you're a brushy fan and you just want to deny the evidence, you can tear me apart. Most of you do that anyway. Go watch the final trial of Billy the Kid to hear all the brushy evidence and see a really entertaining courtroom drama. And uh, see you next time on All Things Billy the Kid.